And now, ladies and gents, our tour continues down into the crypt. And first, we're going to go and see the grave of the man that made all this possible, the architect, Sir Christopher Wren. Here we are, down in the crypt, we'll go and see Sir Christopher Wren first, the architect of this wonderful place. You cannot help but walk on graves here, it's an unfortunate fact, but there we are. And here we have him, the man himself, Sir Christopher Wren. Here we are, the man that made all this possible. The architect. Interestingly enough to walk on graves, I really do, I don't like that at all. You've got a another wren here. That's better. CBM wren. And I'm not sure if that's um a son or I'm not quite sure. You've seen the grave of the man that made all this possible, as I said. A nice bit of stained glass here as well. The stone bearing the mark of Sir Christopher Wren was found near the site of an ancient wolf at Portland from where the stone was transported by sea and by the River Thames for the building of the cathedral. It was shipped to London in 1972 on board the sailing barge May with the other Portland stone for the restoration work and was received at the wharf by the Dean and by the Master and Wardens of the Worshipful Company of Masons who were exercising their ancient right of inspection. That's interesting, isn't it? Godfrey Allen. Better without the flesh, actually, that one. Frederick First Baron Leighton of Stratton. I won't take too many pictures of too many of the memorials down here. Um, most of these, ladies and gentlemen, well, some of these ladies and gentlemen, you've seen upstairs already. <clears throat> or the memorials upstairs is where they're actually buried. The president of the Royal Academy. And I can convert that into 
to. Martin divides his cloak. That is the painting. Yeah. This is an artist. Um, all the artists are buried here. Look, Joseph Mallard William Turner. There's one for you. James Barry. Sir Joshua Reynolds. George Dance, he was a very famous uh, very famous man of his time. I think he painted a picture of the king. This man was an architect, was the last surviving member of the original Royal, Royal Academicians, highly gifted by nature and so on. So Christopher's wife. Look, there you've got William Blake there. Thomas Felstead. Sir Edward John Poyer, Poyer, Baron. As I say, I won't photograph all of them because there are an awful lot down here, an awful lot of people buried down here. Charles Wolsey. things over. I'm terrible for that. To the illustrious memory of Anthony van Dyck, the Flemish master. What's worse with that? Uh, Flemish master, who in 1632 was made principal painter 
in ordinary to King Charles I and Queen Henrietta Maria. And having enriched England with many famous painted uh, portraits, died at Blackfriars in the city on the 9th of December 1641 and was buried in Old St Paul's. His monument perished in the Great Fire, but his name is imperishable. This is very good. And under all these chairs and stuff are other people and whatnot. They literally pack them in pretty good here. William Llewellyn. Let's see all this plane over there. Over here somewhere, I think it's over here. Could be wrong. Yeah. Well, bear with me because I am not completely sure of my bearings here, so it may take me a little while to find. No, it's not here. Yeah. Anyway, there's a very famous person buried in here somewhere, or his memorial was here. I thought it was over here, but I could be wrong. Swamp land. Oh. Here we are. I was going to say, I've got a swan on a stack of Bibles that is buried down here. Now, look. Sir Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin, whose ashes, ashes rest beneath this plaque. Think of the countless millions of lives that this man has saved. This may become a, another piece for another video, this piece of, with Sir Alexander Fleming. So, yeah, that's the discoverer of penicillin. It's a very impressive place, isn't it? So, I haven't taken loads and loads of pictures down here. John Singer Sardin. This is the like okay, roll call of the, the who's who of the famous, this one down here. I don't know if it's pictures or video because I had to stop filming upstairs, I got told off. But Mandel Creighton is a statue of him upstairs. But here is where he's buried, his bishop, Bishop of London, in the Victorian era.
lovely to hear an organ playing, especially being played so well. Now this is a new, slightly newish bit. This piece of sculpture, the work of Josefina at uh, Vasconcelos was presented to the Dean and Chapter of St Paul's in 1957 by Bernard Sunley. Now, I said, no, it's not obviously a new piece, but it's been put here in this area fairly recently by the looks of it, because I don't remember this bit. Although I could be completely wrong. I'm afraid, but... Impressive notwithstanding. This is new. We're going to go and have a look at this. This cloak. <laughs> after that, it brings us to our famous area.
Bishop Mandel Crean, who we've just seen there, in the, uh, buried over there. Okay. Okay. Let's give this Manda Creighton to one by him for Queen Victoria's Jubilee. Let's do it like that because of the um, reflection. We'll be coming up to the 30 minutes on this one in a minute. And this is the Jubilee exhibition, which is a completely new thing. So I am glad I've come today. As I say, go back, you can pause to read any of the descriptions if you wish. St. Paul's, the Monarchan Cam and the Changing World. Two tales and traditions. Right, well I'll get us to the end of this bit first. Which will make a little more sense.
King George V. I am no fan of King George V, if I'm brutally honest with you. He probably wouldn't have liked me much either, but there we are. <laughs> Anyone that says, I'm just scared of my father, and I'm going to make damn sure my children are scared of me, is a coward, in my opinion. And he wasn't scared of his father, because if you look back at the accounts of the time, he had a very loving relationship with his father, and it was actually commented on by himself when his father died that he's lost a friend and brother as well as a father. So, mm. He was a little man, you see, and an angry little man. So, yes. Sorry if I sounded a bit narky there, but I just don't like people that do things like that to kids, but there we are. <coughs> right. And there we are looking through at the tomb of Admiral Nelson. The other thing I want to show you before I end this one is old St Paul's what stood before the great fire. This little chapter house. And it's a truck. some poles. That's always never what I, I won't keep going on about it, but that's never what I understand, particularly with George the Fifth or anyone like that. Why would a grown adult want a child to be scared of them? That's what I don't get. I couldn't think of anything more repellent than making a child scared of me. I really couldn't. I'd feel terrible like that. I know they'll shout at kids and things like that when they're naughty, but I'm not saying you mollycoddle them. I'm quite old school and probably would be in my parenting techniques, but... Mm. Five minutes, so I'll take you on to some of the history. This is William Hewitt, a patriarch merchant who died in 1599, and these are from the old cathedral. Somehow, bits and bobs of them managed to survive the fire. These ain't from the old cathedral, and the newest looking things, such as Charles James Napier. But, um, here we have. Thomas Henniage and Anna, his wife. Now Thomas died in 1594 and Anna died in 1592. So Thomas Henniage was a courtier of Queen Elizabeth I. And that you can see his wife's face. The fire got so hot that it melted bits of her nose and her face. Legs are gone as well, bless them, they'll be hobbling around in the afterlife, very angry probably, 
Admiral Sir Pulteney Malcolm. Lord Rodney, Vice Admiral, on board the Victory. Victory, I think. Decisive victory is obtained over the French fleet. I could be wrong about that one, that he was on victory. I may be wrong. It may have been Hardy that was on uh, victory with, uh, with Nelson. Yes, my dear, it is cold, isn't it? Too? So. I'd agree, yes. So we couldn't help it. Effigies which survived the Great Fire of 1666. And this one is... It's, uh, it's all in Latin. But that person died in November the 29th, 1661. It's a coat of arms there. And this... There's no, no description for this one here, but it, she looks remarkably like Queen Mary the First. Mary the First wasn't buried here or anything, so I don't know. But I always wonder because this, if this is Mary of England, this may be Philip, her, her husband, Philip of Spain. It, and being a Spaniard, a Spaniard, so it was disliked at the time. So it does make you wonder, was the statue vandalised for that reason, or did it explode in the heat or something? But I don't know. That may well not be Queen Mary and uh, Philip of Spain. And the lovely things that we see outside that I've taken pictures of several times, these are the old worn-out ones. The originals, so to speak. Yeah. General William Francis Patrick Napier, historian of the Peninsula War. That's the gentleman. Right. I should get you over to here. Admiral of the Fleet. I have to go around the other side to see that gentleman's name. Anyway, right. We're nearly at 30, yeah, we are. We're at 35 minutes now, so join me for the next.